on? Carlos here from the TrustedSec IR team. So today I want to talk to you about a security advisory that came out on December 3rd. It is for CVE 2025-55182. It is for a vulnerability called React to Shell. It is a critical remote code execution bug. It has a CVSS score of 10. And within hours of release, multiple Chinese Nexus threat groups began targeting vulnerable applications out there in the internet, as well as we have also seen reports about a North Korean group deploying a very advanced uh, payload to multiple servers. Uh, it currently is affecting React 19. It's also affecting Next.js, uh, both versions 15 and 16 uh, when using the app router. It's also affecting other JS frameworks uh, that are based on React and server components. Uh, some of those server components are Waku, Vite, as well as the RSC uh, plugin. The recommendation is to patch as quickly as possible. But here at TrustedSec, we want to take it a bit further. And this is a great opportunity for you to start working on ingesting the telemetry from all of your Linux machines and even setting up auditing in those servers. When it comes to the insert response team, as we were working multiple cases with multiple customers, one of the things that we notice is that we normally see better telemetry configured by our customers as it relates to Windows hosts, but not so much for Linux. Linux has a very robust auditing system that you can leverage. Because of that, we're making public in our GitHub a audit configuration that should allow you to detect if an attacker is using reconnaissance uh, commands like who am I, ID, you name, host name, or any of those. We also want to check if any access is being done to any sensitive files like passwd, shadow, anything inside of the .ssh folder, both for root or for any user on the machine. We also want to check for modifications of shell configuration files, which is something that we have seen being used by the actors for persistence. So in the configuration file that we're providing you, as you can see, we have coverage for bash RC, bash profiles, CHRC, and many others, because we wanna make sure that we are able to track any modifications that happens to these files. In addition, we also want to have coverage in the case that there's any persistence action just by modifying Chrome jobs. So we're including those in the configuration itself, as well as modifications to the Chrome tab. We are also looking for suspicious fault rights in common staging locations. So we want to lock those specifically around temp, our temp, and many others. Uh, we also want to track spawning of shells by the Node.js process itself. Uh, on this one, my recommendation is just adjust the path so it matches your Node.js installation. And also we want to monitor attempts to access cloud metadata services. So you're going to be logging all of the socket connections are going out, outbound from the machine to the outside world. Uh, there will be some filtering that you will need to do in your SIM to be able to reduce the signal to noise ratio on this one, but I highly recommend that you do. We also want you to monitor for post-exploitation tools as netcat, curl, wget being used. We have seen instances where wget and curl are actively being used by some of the actors. We also want to look and monitor for any base64 operations using the base64 uh, executable itself. We also want to monitor and watch for system services are being manipulated. These are the most common ones that we see out there. One of the things to remember is that once you create these rule files in your Etsy audit rules.d folder, is that you need to load them with the audit CTL. Uh, command line. Uh, we're also going to be providing you with some Sigma rules that you can leverage for detecting if there's any exploitation attempts of the Node.js service itself uh, based on the telemetry that we just enabled via auditing. And the main reason that I wanted to provide you guys with all of this Sigma rules and this configuration is to help you start setting up a foundation in your environment where you're improving the logging as it relates to your Linux servers and also start working on generating stuff like Sigma rules where you can leverage those then for whatever SIM you're using as well as if you're doing forensics or threat hunting, you can just grab those Sigma rules and 
turn them into whatever platform you're using. That's the beauty of Sigma rules is the uh, different ways that we can then turn them into the different query languages that multiple sims use. Uh, that's one of the main reasons that I want to go with this and share this in our GitHub. We also include it for cron job creation and modification. We included Sigma rules for suspicious cron tab command execution, as well as for the modification of any of the services. So it is important that you have multiple sources of data being ingested into your environment. In addition to the Linux audit rules, you can even deploy Sysmon for Linux. And and configure that into your environment. And if you need help from the Trusted Sec team on this, feel free to contact us and you can work with our Purple team where they will assist you not only in making sure that you're ingesting the data sources properly, but also that in your SIM you have the proper alerts to detect on any of these actions and help you tune those. Uh, from the incident response side, if you believe that you have been targeted by any of these actors, we can help you out. And as always, talk to you in the next video and hope to see you guys again.